The film begins by showing abandoned children who were raised by a secret organization. Those kids were trained to become professional hitmen who have no mercy. Once deemed worthy, they were shaved bald and given tattoos in the form of barcodes right on the back of their head. Apart from that, their names will also be deleted from the country's database so that they cannot be detected. A few years later, one of the boys trained has succeeded in becoming a hitman with a success rate of 100%, and he is known as Agent 47. However, let's just call him Hitman. That day, Hitman was carrying out an important mission in Russia. In his hotel room, Hitman communicated with an intermediary admin who connects him with the client. Here, it was revealed that the mission he must carry out was to kill the president of Russia. The client claimed that the president was suspected of having the illegal arms trade and covered prostitution business belonging to his brother. That morning, the president of Russia went to the state palace as usual, and before entering the building, he answered several questions from journalists who had been waiting for him since dawn. But suddenly, something happened that shocked everyone there. After completing the mission, Hitman immediately went to the station to leave Russia, but he ran into a problem because a woman saw him. What was even worse was that the Interpol was on their way to Russia to arrest him. Because he didn't want to get caught, Hitman immediately asked for the identity of the witness, and it didn't take long for the admin to tell him that the woman's name was Nika, with a dragon tattoo on her cheek. Unfortunately, when Hitman wanted to meet Nika, there was another Hitman who tried to stop him. It turned out that this assassin was hired by the Russian intelligence agency and came from the same organization as Hitman. But fortunately, Hitman managed to avoid all the attacks. On the other hand, an Interpol agent named Mike had just landed in Russia. He got the job to arrest Hitman, who was suspected of being a foreign citizen. He also got information that Hitman was hiding in a hotel. Arriving at the location, Mike immediately cooperated with the local police, but a Russian special agent, Yuri, didn't agree with the arrival of Interpol, especially since the case occurred in Russia. So, like it or not, Mike had to withdraw from this case. At the same time, Hitman got information from the admin that the Russian president was still alive, which meant he wouldn't get paid because the target hasn't died yet. Hitman was confused by the news even though the bullet had clearly shot the president's head. He then suspected something was wrong with this mission, and not long after, the admin informed him that his location had been known by the Russian police. So, without thinking twice, Hitman immediately activated a trap bomb in his room. He then walked away carrying his two guns and began to finish off all the special forces who got in his way. Meanwhile, Mike and his partner just entered the hotel. They both looked worried because Hitman had slaughtered all the Russian special forces. After walking through all the corridors, Mike was finally able to stop Hitman. But as a great killer, Hitman was able to outwit him. Mike and his partner decided to search Hitman's room. But unfortunately, this murderer had already destroyed all his things, so that no one could find any clues. However, Mike found a suitcase containing tapping devices. Not long after, Yuri and his men also came to the room. He looked annoyed because Interpol had intervened in this case, and of course, Mike was suspicious of their motives and wondered why did the Russian agents want to handle this case without help from Interpol. It turned out that Yuri suspected that Hitman was part of the CIA, who was sent by America to kill the president. On the other hand, Hitman came to Nika's place and immediately kidnapped her. And then he took her to a quiet place and threatened to kill her if she didn't tell the truth. Because Nika was afraid, she explained that the president has a twin brother who is very obsessed with power and often commits crimes. And this is the president's twin called Sam. Not only that, Nika also claimed to be Sam's mistress, but she was always tortured and abused. One day, the president refused to get involved in Sam's illegal business, so Sam decided to finish his brother by hiring a hitman, and after that, he would replace his brother as the president. Listening to all Nika's explanations, Hitman realized that his client was Sam. Meanwhile, at the Russian police station, Mike asked for information about the city plan. Then, a police chief explained that all transportation routes were being closely guarded. However, the train lines within the city were not being guarded. From this information, Mike concluded that Hitman would definitely go to the train station. And as expected, Hitman and Nika went to that place. However, 
Hitman realized that Mike was also there, so he told Nika to split up. He then disguised himself as a train officer while looking for a way to escape. But unfortunately, there was an assassin who was chasing him. Because of that, Hitman tried to outwit him, and when the assassin was off guard, Hitman immediately knocked him out. After knocking out the assassin, Hitman saw three people carrying guns. Feeling threatened, he was determined to find and finish them all off, but it turned out that those three people were hired assassins from his organization who were hired by Sam. As a Hitman who had principles, Hitman challenged them to fight fairly. After that, they replaced the gun with a sword and the fight ensued. After finishing them off brutally, Hitman came to Nika, who was hiding. But apparently, Mike and his partner were already there, so, like it or not, Hitman was forced to shoot them. Actually, Hitman really wanted to finish off this Interpol agent, but Nika persuaded him to let Mike live, especially as he wasn't a bad person who wanted to kill him. Not long after that, the medical team and an ambulance came to the station to provide aid to Mike and his friend. Luckily, Mike wasn't hurt too badly. A few moments later, Yuri came back to Mike and emphasized that Interpol should not interfere again in the mission to catch Hitman. Hearing that, Mike just smiled while patting the Russian agent on the shoulder. But actually, he did that so he could slip a listening device into Yuri's suit. After that, Mike and his colleague went to the Russian agent's office while listening to Yuri's every conversation. Here, they finally found out that the agent was cooperating with Sam, the president's twin. Apart from that, Mike also heard that Sam deliberately hired assassins from the same organization as Hitman so that they could kill each other. That way, nothing could stop him from becoming a president of Russia. He did all this to protect his youngest brother's weapons business. In the midst of that, Yuri's man came to Mike's car and forced him to return to England. On the other hand, Hitman and Nika were in a remote area to hide temporarily. In that place, Hitman looked very angry because of the incident in the station when Nika forbade him to kill Mike. As an assassin, Hitman felt he had violated his own principles and to pay for his mistake, he had to finish off Nika. However, Hitman suddenly felt sorry because this woman had been abused and even tortured too often by Sam. After that, Nika gave important information about Sam's youngest brother, Udra Belikov. Nika said that Udra was the target of CIA's murder, but he's still alive until now because he is protected by Russia. Hearing this, Hitman intended to involve the CIA, especially in digging up information regarding Udra's illegal business. That evening, Hitman told Nika to meet with a CIA agent. Hitman deliberately did not meet the agent in person because it could raise suspicion. He chose to monitor remotely to make sure that Nika was safe. Then he spoke on the telephone and invited the agent to cooperate. The point is that Hitman would help the CIA finish off Uder as long as the agent was willing to provide valid information. And without much ado, they both agreed. After that, the CIA agent told Hitman that Udry would meet a mafia from Germany in Istanbul. Long story short, Hitman and Nika arrived at the meeting location. Before starting his mission, Hitman learned everything about the German mafia because he was planning to go undercover, especially since Udry had never met this person. Apart from studying the mafia's identity, Hitman also checked all the locations that the mafia would visit. That evening, Hitman invited Nika to have dinner at a restaurant while monitoring the target of his operation. Hitman deliberately put medicine in the Mafia's drink. When the target was vomiting in the toilet, Hitman immediately started his actions brutally. After that, Hitman rushed to meet Udder using the identity he had stolen. But unfortunately, Nika was already drunk and teased him constantly, so Hitman was forced to drug her. Without wasting any time, Hitman went to the nightclub where Udra would meet with the Mafia. Upon arrival at the location, Udri seemed to believe in Hitman's disguise. But one of Udri's men told him that the real Mafia was not bald. Because of that, Udra became very angry and a shootout ensued. When Udra was dying, Hitman immediately killed him, and he did that so that Sam would show himself. On the other side, Mike and his colleague were at Interpol headquarters. Even though they have been expelled from Russia, they were still investigating the case. Here, they both collected photos of the president of Russia, and then they found something strange. 
where there are two photos taken on the same date. This made Mike even more convinced that the president indeed has a twin brother. Meanwhile, Yuri has been assigned to hide this secret. Mike then checked Hitman's suitcase again to look for his traces, but he didn't find anything except a key in the shape of a cross. Seeing its strange shape, he wondered what this thing actually was. Not long after, Mike heard about Udra's death, and of course, he asked his superiors for permission to return to Russia so he could arrest Hitman. But unfortunately, he was told to stop the investigation because Russia could threaten the security of countries in Europe. Even though he had been forbidden to do the investigation, Mike still would continue his search. Apart from that, he also intended to go to Udra's funeral because Hitman would definitely be there. On the other hand, Hitman was on a train towards Istanbul. He couldn't wait to finish off Sam so that his mission is deemed successful. Not only that, he also wanted to avenge Nika, who had always been tortured by Sam. Hitman didn't realize that his conscience had returned, like a normal human being, even though he never cared about anyone. But since meeting Nika, his heart moved and he has become more human. He then told Nika to go as far as possible, so she wouldn't be chased by Sam's henchmen. But before parting ways, Nika asked about Hitman's real identity so she could meet him again. Hitman then told her his nickname, that is Agent 47. At the same time, Yuri met with Sam to talk about Hitman, who was starting to threaten both of their lives. Knowing this, Hitman was very angry at Yuri for failing to kill Hitman, even though he had hired four Hitman at the same time. Sam then gave Yuri a last chance. He had to hire another assassin to kill Hitman at Udra's funeral. That night, when this Russian agent was taking care of Udra's funeral files, suddenly the electricity in his office went out and someone attacked him. Not long after, Yuri woke up and he was tied in a tub. Hitman forced Yuri to change the target for the hired assassin. Hitman wanted the assassin to shoot Sam at exactly 2.30 p.m. at the church, where Udri's funeral was taking place. If Yuri didn't want to comply, he would be electrocuted to death. Meanwhile, before Sam arrived at the funeral, Mike, who had arrived first, was quite surprised by the guards there. Apparently, Sam had deployed guards to guard the place very tightly. Not long after that, Sam came and started his speech at the funeral using the president's identity. At the same time, Yuri looked increasingly worried because Hitman only gave him 12 minutes to carry out his orders. Because he didn't want to die ridiculously, Yuri finally followed Hitman's orders and contacted his hired assassin to shoot Sam, and this is what happened. The guards immediately locked all the entrances and exits and then took Sam to another place, but it turned out that Hitman had disguised himself as one of the guards. Therefore, he immediately brutalized and killed all of them. Hitman then dragged Sam to a room for Bishop, but unfortunately, Hitman was attacked by another assassin. Meanwhile, Mike felt something was odd about the incident just now, because he was sure that the shooting was not Hitman's style. At the same time, he remembered the cross key he found in Hitman's suitcase. After asking a priest, Mike finally found out where Hitman was, and it turned out that the key was to open the bishop's room, and without thinking twice, Mike went straight to the room that the priest was referring to. On the other hand, Hitman had just defeated the assassin and was about to finish off Sam. But before doing that, he brought up Nick's suffering, who had been tortured for years. And of course, he would not let Sam die without realizing his sins. But because Sam was afraid of dying, he offered Hitman a safe and comfortable life. However, Hitman refused all the offers and immediately killed Sam without mercy. Unfortunately, Mike and his group managed to attack Hitman from outside, and he surrendered without a fight. He was then arrested and taken into a car. But on the way, the car was intercepted by CIA agents who had been working with Hitman. They tried to catch the Interpol officers off guard so that Hitman could escape. Months later, Hitman went to Mike's place. There, he explained that he was from an organization that always recruited abandoned boys to become Hitman. Because Hitman felt guilty for the failure of the Interpol's mission, Hitman finally cloned himself, and after that, he killed his clone at Mike's house so that this Interpol agent would not need to chase him again. At the end of the film, Hitman decided to become Nika's protector from a distance. Here he becomes more and more human, but he would still be brutal. The film ends with a happy ending.